Hello everybody, welcome back to another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle video. My name is D Free here today. We have a couple of awakenings for some of the uh, waifu slash peppy gal units in the game. Hope you guys enjoy, hit subscribe if you are new, and we are going to go over all of that stuff. So, they've been slowly but surely building up this category. You know, they brought out Brianne de Chateau and a few other units as well. So... Just in the future, you know, I expect more units and, of course, more variations of some of the Saiyan units as well. So they're going to continue to build up this category. Maybe one day it'll actually get a good, quote-unquote, leader. Uh, they did have, again, Brienne that came out as a three-key 100%. But you still, if you were going to take this seriously for anything other than Super Battle Road, want it to be higher than that, right? So we'll see what happens. But anyways, as of now... Uh, these units might have some flash, some uh, splash ability outside of SBR. We'll see what happens, ultimately. By the way, um, Supreme Opi of Time is not in here. I just noticed that. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump in. So, we have these two units. They have Awoken. So, we're going to start off and take a look at the Unawoken card, and then we're going to transition over to the Awoken card as well. So, we have Attack plus 80% at the start of the turn. Peppy Girls, Categories, Allies get 2 key and 100% defense. So this is one of the things that they did to uh, mitigate the fact that the leader skill or like the leader skill boost was so bad, pretty much. Because again, prior to Brienne, it was just Ribrian who was like what seventy seven percent, something like that. So this is what they did to kind of mitigate it. They started giving crazy high boosts to things like defense. So one hundred percent defense is really, really good, uh, and it always will be really solid just in the game. It sucks though because it is restricted, and then the two key is pretty good, and then eighty percent. So she does herself get all these buffs. So we take a look at, by the way, she uh, Supreme Damage and Seals. I don't think she's going to upgrade from Supreme. But again, I don't know what these units even do yet. So it seems that they use the Maiden's Love medals that Ribrianne used as well. Just going to point that out. So there we go. So that event is, if it's not live now, it's it's going to be coming back. Um, because these two units should be potentially awakening from there. Uh, but actually, I can tell you here if she uses those medals or not. Uh, Awoken. Yes, she does. Okay, and 400,000 Zenny. All right, let's transition back over here. So we're going to take a look at the Awoken card. So she now supports physical types. Wow, okay. So physical? No, she did. Never mind. I was going to say, like, wait, what? She picks up physical? That's actually a sneaky good uh, leader skill. And you know the funny thing about this leader skill is it's it's better than things like, uh, you know, Texel, right, who has three key 70% as a leader skill. It's... It's really interesting kind of where the game's gone. So let's go and transition it. Uh, excuse me there. Supreme Damage and Steel Seals. Okay, with the Bancho fan. That's pretty cool. Uh, pure Dreams. Attack plus 100 now. So all they did was bumper attack by 20, the support by one key, and 20% defense. Which, again, this is really good. She's basically like – and then the Seal. She's, she's basically one of the best possible units you can use with the Peppy Gals SBR. I'd actually need to pull that up. But let's actually see – uh, their event just in general. Um, where is that at? I don't even like normally do this. Uh, no kind of events. No? Okay, I don't even know where the hell it is. Uh, specials. That's No, we'll just search it. We'll just go search Super Battle Road. All right. So Super Battle Road 2. Boom. And then the Peppy Gals one. So that one ends off. She at least has type advantage for the ending fight versus Oolong, so that's not too bad. So she's going to be one of the better characters throughout, just because, like I said, the heal or the uh, seal, excuse me. So she's that's an interesting awakening. I think that it's very vanilla, though, and I think that Bulla has a better chance at being a good unit. I, I really do think that Bulla slash Bra does have a better chance of being a good unit. So we're going to come over here. Greatly raises attack, which is interesting and causes supreme damage to the enemy. So this is the attack where she forces Vegeta to come in and do it. Uh, youth and curiosity. All allies get two key and thirty percent. See, like this right here. Like I said, this has a disgusting possibility to be three key forty percent, and that's going to be nasty. So we're going to come back to that. Chance to evade enemies' attacks, including super attacks. So it's just chance, which was uh, there's no listing of the probability here, but I believe just regular chance is what a ten percent chance, something low like that. Uh. Plus 20%. Oh, no, never mind, never mind. This is why they don't specify. Just ignore what I just said. Plus 20% per category ally on the team. So up to a maximum of 50%. So she gets up to a 50% dodge rate. That's right. And she has an offensive support pretty much and key support. Also a GT unit. Also a hybrid Saiyan, which oddly enough would already made her one of the best units on hybrids, by the way. She's not going to get the dodge. But as a supporter, because hybrids have horrendous links with uh, synergy-wise because of the leader, unless you're on a bunch of LRs anyway, 
she's going to be really good automatically on that team, which is really cool. Yep, there we go. Oh, and massively raises attack now. Wow. Okay. Massively. What's the modifier on that? Raises attack by 100%. It was 50 before. There are not a lot of cards that have a massive modifier. That's really cool. That's really, really cool. That's really, really cool. Let me see a massive modifier. Wow. How many units have that? Let me actually do a search for massive. Yeah, there are not a lot of units. There aren't. They're just a handful. Uh, <laughs> Hercule with massive power modifier. Okay. Yeah, that's really cool. I was going to say, I haven't seen that one for a long time, and it, I guess the most recent unit was this, aside from Hercule, massively raising attack. That's awesome. That's awesome. 100% boost versus 30% with uh, the immense, with the 12 key, and just regular raise. So it's 30, 50, and 100. Regular raise is 30. Great raise is 50, and massive is 100. Wow. Okay. Did SS4 Gogeta have that? Didn't he have that? Or no, it must be great, because he does attack and defense. This will be the last thing, and we'll get back on track. Uh, yep, great. Okay, 50% to both, which is why he's able to tank post-super. Wow, okay. Um, Like I said, she had the best probability to be good, and automatically, without even reading the best, the, the rest of her passive, she's already one of the best units in this category. Uh, So three key and 40%. That's incredibly splashable, right? And like I said, she's a hybrid. So hybrids is going to love her. They're, they're, she's just she's just good now. Also, um, chance to evade enemies' attacks, including super attack, plus 30%. So here's the deal. I said this earlier, and it was kind of wrong. These types of passives do consider the own unit itself. So she's always going to have a 30% chance to dodge on a team like hybrids. She, I mean, if you run another, like, I guess maybe Pan, then she would get... No, Pan's not a Peppy. Never mind. But if you ran another, I don't know. Nah, you're not really going... I'm not going to spend time doing this. Um, you're not really going to get more than 30 on, on a hybrid team, but you're going to get a 60% dodge rate on Peppy Gao's team, though. And then again, leader skill is really good, too, just like the the, the uh, Chi Chi's is. Wow, okay, I'm impressed. I'm very, very impressed. She's just like Turles. She's got the same exact passive as Turles, which is wild to me, except she dodges as well. So, you know, you could kind of argue, and this is crazy because Turles has, like, the best one he's one of the best units in the game just in general not he's got one of the best support passives in the game as well he's incredibly underrated right but she has the exact same passive three key and 40 percent he does the debuff and he does a transformation you know with turles you don't want him to transform so i'm just going to put that out there but if he has to transform he, he changes entirely to an offensive unit more of a generic unit things like that but i'm going to just say i'd rather have dodge than a debuff <laughs> so that's pretty wild. Now she's not as good as Turles though, because I mean Turles has sixteen thousand HP, almost well rounding up anyway, fifteen point six attack and then eleven thousand defense. Her stats are not going to come near that. Look at they don't even touch it. But she's a very good option. And then of course Turles has all these applicable categories, which would always make him better. So it's just really cool to see that she's even can be held like in the same sentence, despite again not being as good. But again, like I said, I, personally, I'd rather have to dodge. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you uh, because the debuffing sometimes isn't always great. And then it's also, for one, if, if the event can even be debuffed, but then even you take it a step further, it's only against super class as well. So, like, whatever. I don't even – half the time I forget he even has that passive because it's so irrelevant. So that's interesting to me, man. Uh, but altogether, let me know what you guys think. I think I think she's by far the better one. And I don't want to cap on Chi-Chi. It's just – Chi Chi's going to offensively put out some of the best damage in the category with 100% passive. Uh, and 12.5 is actually a relatively high attack stat for a rebirth type unit. But if she raised attack, she would be a lot better. The ceiling feels like it should be something that this unit has instead of the massive. They, they should switch the super attack mechanics because it doesn't make much sense the way they are. Really, all this does, which is insane, by the way, 100% boost. Um, that, that, um,. All that really does is give her offensive viability that she didn't have at all before. But it's only for one turn, so you kind of pick your poison with that. So ultimately, though, she's very, very good. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Hit subscribe if you happen to be new, and they're already talking about Turles 2.0. I always said he was an overrated unit. Ah, nah. Turles is perfect. Turles is perfect. But it's interesting if they continue the trend of adding more units that are similar to Turles. That will, of course take down his viability outside of the categories if they drop another one 
but has the categories he has and the flexibility and not being restricted category wise, that's a whole different thing. Because then you have like, uh, for example, before we get out of here, they just kind of did something similar with the pure sands category. They dropped this unit here. And this unit actually has a, a better passive than Turles. He does, but, well, they do. But it's restricted. So that's kind of one of the things that you look at. But then you look at, like, well, what teams would you even use Turles? So it's kind of, you know what I'm saying. So all together, though, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. I'll catch all of you guys next Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle video.